Welcome to Salcedo Paranormal. It is Tuesday, November 1st, 2022. And tonight I am sharing true paranormal stories from the web. As always, you can find all episodes of the show along with links to social media, ways to donate, and ways to contact me at the podcast page. And that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S A L. S I D O Paranormal dot podbean dot com. Always happy to hear from you all whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions. Our stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. And um had a great weekend of shows for um leading up to Halloween and then also last night. I want to thank Again, Michael Strange from Trouble Minds Radio for both being on my show and also having me on his show last night on Halloween. And also Derek uh, for being on my show last night as well and doing so much of the research for that for that episode. It was, um, it was amazing. So, um, so plans for the rest of the week. Tomorrow I will be doing another book review of... A Stephen King book. I just don't know which one yet. I have to go back and see which ones I've done and then see which ones I have left to do that I've read. So that's tomorrow night. Uh, and then Thursday will be Paranormal News since I have not done that in a little while now. Um, so I think uh, that covers everything. So I can get to these stories here. I have four of them for you all tonight. And, uh, so yeah, I think I'm all set. I think I can just get to the stories. So thank you all for being here and listening whenever you're able, as well as listening on the podcast and YouTube feeds. Really appreciate it. And, uh, looking forward to, um, to this year, especially because these last two years, um, there were a lot of schedule changes and figuring out how to do things and, all of that, and I think um, this year I'm in a lot better place starting out than I was in those first couple of years, because um, I've learned so much. So, um, let's see here. So yeah, I think that's it. And now, so, um, three of these stories are, st stories are fairly short, if I can talk. Um, but then the last one is a little bit longer, so we'll go um, with these stories here. The, save the long one for last. This first one says, this happened a few years ago. We have had a few things happen in our home over the years, but mostly footsteps and things randomly falling off of shelves. This was one of the more creepy things that happened. I work from home, and my husband works sec second shift. So I was in my office working, and he was in the bedroom, sleeping. I thought I heard him in the hallway, and then he knocked on my door, which is unusual. He normally just walks in if he needs me. So I got up, and I opened the door, and no one was there. I went to the bedroom to see what he wanted, and when I opened the door, he asked me why I was knocking on the door. I told him I thought it was him knocking on my office door, and I was coming to see what he wanted. And he said that no, someone knocked on the bedroom door and he was upset that I woke him up. We were both a little freaked out. So that's where the story ends. Um, sounds like there's sounds, I wonder if they were hearing the same sound, um, just it was traveling in a certain way or if there was some kind of a, if there was really something or someone knocking on both doors at the same time um hard to say with that uh just that that basic description but um it doesn't sound like it was either of them and uh, the husband apparently was upset so i i don't think there was any kind of um joking or prank uh pranking around in there so odd story especially if they've had experiences um so yeah, just just odd. I don't know what to make of that for sure. Um, but uh, 
So I'll move on to the next story here. This one says, uh, one time when I was young, I don't remember my age or grade, only that I was young. I was in the living room with my family when I decided to go to the hallway. Basically, this is the layout of my house. When you enter, there is a small room to your right where we keep stuff we use for cleaning. And the guest room connects to the kitchen. Uh, oh, wait. I think I messed up. Oh, and the guest room on the left. To the left, there we go. If you go forward about 3.5 steps, there's the living room, which connects to the kitchen, if you keep going forward. At the entrance of the living room, uh, to your right, there's an L-shaped hallway with three rooms and a bathroom. At the beginning of the hallway, in the corner, there is a small space to your right that leads to the garage, and to the left of that is my room. So I was in the living room and decided to run into the hallway. When my body froze, when I looked to the right, to my right, I saw a black figure, which looked exactly like a man, just standing there. I slowly walked back to the living room and went back there later to see what it was, but there was nothing there. And that's where that story ends. Um, sounds like they saw a shadow figure um, as a child. The initial reaction is, um, this is really what stood out to me, that just stopping. I wonder if that was a fear reaction or some kind of contact. Um, or, or just the sensing of it being there that stopped them as a child. Um, I don't know. I'm wondering also, it doesn't say that there was a lot of activity in the home before or after. So it could have just been someone passing through. I do believe that is a thing that happens. I, th I think I've had it happen to me before in my own apartment. Um, so I don't know. But, uh. Glad nothing else happened there with that with that case. So um, that's all I have really for that one. So I will move on to this third story here. This one says, let's see here. Lost it. Okay, there we go. This one says, two days ago, I was driving to the countryside at night and passed a gray naked looking humanoid with no facial features besides black empty looking eyes or eye sockets and no genitalia this thing was walking beside the road and then ran across the road into the woods i still remember its face i'm scared it only happened about 25 i'm sorry 15 kilometers from my house what was it? And that's where that story ends. Hopefully nothing else happened. Um, hello, APAC, I see you there. And Matt's all, and others. Um, but uh, that is an odd sighting. I wonder what that was. Sounds like some kind of creature. Um, but uh, sounds like they were just maybe just as afraid, possibly, as the witness was, as the writer was. Um, so, it's, it's weird that in a way that it was near the woods, I think it said it was near the woods, <clears throat> but, um, let's see, yeah, so into the woods, but there was no other sightings of lights or craft or anything like that, so, that's kind of odd in a way. Um, so yeah, I don't know what they saw, other than maybe possibly some kind of creature and or alien or something i don't know so that uh so i have one more story here this is the longer one and uh 
This one says, first of all, English is not my first language. So sorry in advance for any mistakes. So here's the deal. And I have to say, I read this story earlier today, and they did pretty pretty well for English not being their first language. So anyway, um, this one says, for a long time in my family, we have seen my mom in places where she physically could not be. One day I was with my sister watching TV, and my mom was at work. Then the front door opened, and my mom appeared, showing only the top half of her body, bending over so that her waist and legs were out. I wonder what they mean by that, but it's hard to say for sure. She seemed distracted, turned her head in all directions, and then asked for my other sister. There are three of us. We told her she was in her room. My mom said, okay, thanks, and went out. It was super weird. But then a few hours later, she got off work, excuse me, came home, and we asked her about what happened earlier. And she said she was at work all day. I want to clarify that my mom is very serious. Is a very serious woman. She doesn't make jokes and she doesn't lie about her day. So this was super creepy. Other days, we hear her calling us, and then when we go to her room or the kitchen, we find out she's not even in the house. The creepiest thing happened before I was born. My mother was at home at about 9 p.m. watching TV. And her sister was washing dishes in front of the window. Then my mother heard her sister calling. Uh, we'll just use S. S, it's late. Come in the house. Then my mom replied that she was already in the house. But her sister didn't hear her. She kept calling my mom because she was watching her through the window playing outside in the garden. Then my mom shouted that she was already in the house. Her sister turned her head towards her. And then she turned her head towards the window. And right in front of the window was a copy of my mother, as a child, obviously. Only she looked pale and haggard and very thin. My mother and her sister swear that this was real. And that the girl even smiled at them from outside the window. They both ran to their room and couldn't sleep all night. Coupled with the events that we ourselves have experienced in my home, I have nothing left to do but believe her. I have even seen my mom at night walk through our rooms and leave without saying anything. She is not a sleepwalker. As a bonus, my mother was born in a very small town in Mexico. There, there are testimonies of apparitions and supernatural things there all day long. And since her childhood, she has always experienced supernatural experiences that are not at all pleasant. I'd love to hear your opinions. So that's the end of that story. Um, I don't know what to make of it. Uh, sounds like some kind of being, um, that was able to look like the, the writer's mother. Now it is odd that the appearance of this, whoever this was, changed and seemed to m mirror the way, the appearance of this writer's mother as she grew up. Um, I've never really heard of that before in a story like this, at least not that I can think of. Um, a lot of times it seems like when I hear about what they call doppelgangers, it's everything takes place in, um, a set period of time so that this figure, this duplicate always looks the same around the same age. 
So that is an odd detail to the story. Um, and there's a lot there. So uh, I, I don't know. That's pretty amazing that um, whoever, whatever this is, is also changing along with the uh, the one that they're copying. So, um, yeah, but that's all I have for today. Um, do a, it's kind of nice to do a short episode after such a busy weekend, though, in a way. So, hope you all don't mind. But thank you all for being here, and I'll be back tomorrow night with another book review on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care, everyone.